you know, I don't know that I want to fill this in too much because he's got. Well, let's just do like this general area and then we can. Well, this. What is that? That's the crock. The heck is the crock? The drain runs into that and then that. <laughs> that pumps the, the drain lines back out to the septic field. Where are you learning all this stuff about plumbing? It was explained to me at one point or another, you know? All right. We've got a vapor barrier to put down and then- Insulation. A bunch of, a bunch of insulation and I wasn't able to fit it all in there. Uh -huh. I didn't even- hit the... So we're trying to get No. <laughs> I didn't <know. laughs> I'm Jameson. And I'm Jamie. And this is Braden and Maddie. We recently took a leap of faith, trading in our home in Georgia for some space in my parents' house. We gave up my high paying corporate job to pursue our dream of building stuff and empowering others. Whether we're building a family, building a business, building a house, or building a table, we like to do it ourselves. This is our DIY life. Hey guys, welcome to episode three of our dream house build. This is a very exciting episode because we get to install our metal roof. All right, so today is an exciting day. The other day we had the garage doors put on um, on the barn, but today we're having the roof is starting off. We're getting that installed and they're, it's really cool because they're actually gonna be forming the metal on site and cutting it to length. We looked at different, or ordering the metal roof from different suppliers, and the way that it usually goes is that you order it to length, and each individual piece of the roof gets cut to length, formed, and then they pack it in a crate, and they send it to you so that you can install it on the roof. We've got a complex roof, so that makes that a very tough thing to do. Um, as far as measuring all of that out ahead of time, we didn't want to go through that. Um, and it just got, it got really expensive through a lot of those suppliers. Luckily, um, one of the guys from our Amish crew recommended um, a friend of his that actually comes and forms all of the metal on site. So for the standing seam metal roof, uh, he actually brings a trailer and it's got a machine in the back of it that it sucks a coil a flat stock, uh, flat metal or flat steel through it. It forms it and then he can cut it to length all on site. So when we were deciding on our metal roof, we couldn't really decide what color we wanted to go with. We were kind of between black and charcoal, but luckily you guys helped us out. We posted something on Instagram where you guys got to vote and you helped us pick the color. We went with yeah. charcoal. Surprisingly, I, we were both leaning towards black in the beginning and I thought for sure that black was just going to win it all. Yeah. But surprisingly, I think it was like 90 some percent of you um, selected charcoal. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm really glad our, now that we went with charcoal. Like, I really love the color. Of that this swayed room. our opinion to charcoal, and I, yeah, I mean, we love how it turned out. I love the color. It was perfect. Yeah, so thank um, you guys. It looks like a ski lodge. It does kind of look it like a ski me lodge. Ski lodge vibes. So they're installing the windows now. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool how they're doing it. Uh, normally, they would cut out the windows with like a reciprocating saw. Uh huh. But literally, they go from the inside with a chainsaw and cut it out, and it goes really uh, fast. I did the first one myself, well, the big one myself. You did? Yeah. Wow, look at they that. They had to come back and clean it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you did it, but you did a terrible but job. But it's fun, <laughs> yeah.
this one right here goes from there all the way back. It's seven feet tall. It's literally wow. like a wall of windows. And that Where is, is that? that's gonna be in the dining room looking out back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be really cool. Okay, so I don't mind it anymore. What? I thought for a minute it was gonna bother me. What? The whole white inside part of it. Yeah, the jam liner? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it'll be fine. The only thing that really sucks is I have to paint the inside of all of these windows. Yeah. Oh, but and the I other thing is that, that like color. little peel away thing that's supposed to be on the inside of the window. Oh, is that there? No, it's there, but there's like a half inch gap between the side of the window. So you will have to come back and clean it up. Not as much, but it will yeah. require some cleanup. So we decided to go with, we wanted black windows. However, these particular windows did not come black on the inside. Well, they're pre-primed. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't get them painted. Well, I think you, I don't know. I don't know exactly. I think you could get them painted on the inside, but it was really expensive. It was like an extra couple hundred bucks a window, mm -hmm. I think, like each individual window. So it would have been a lot of money. And uh, Jamie here offered to paint them. Yeah, it was so, like, I would love to paint the windows. <laughs> so we just went with a pre-primed interior and then the exterior is black. Um, so they turned out great. We love how they look. Yeah, we, we actually did, they're really, really big windows, but I think the thing that makes them look even bigger is we added a two foot transom to the top of all the windows. So they are, they are tall windows. They're yeah. what, seven, seven or eight feet tall? Uh, they're seven, some of them are seven feet. Some of them are a little bit smaller because you've got countertops and whatnot in front of them. But yeah, overall, they're pretty big windows. We ordered, uh, we actually ordered single hung windows. Oh yeah, this is good. So we saved a little money here because they accidentally. But they decided to send us double hung, double windows, hung windows, which so is great. I mean, we we were we, we went picked, with single yeah, hung to save some money. Yeah, I mean, we would have if you know if we had enough money, we would have just picked black painted and double hung windows. However, we we're trying to save some money, so we picked pre primed and single hung. But they made a mistake and said it's double hung, which we're not gonna complain, they're already we installed. So okay with that one. Very happy with that. This is like a hundred pounds for All right, so about the same time that the windows and doors were going in, we were prepping the in-floor heat for the garage and the basement floor. Uh, to do that, we started out by putting in drains in the garage. So those, uh, basically we have two catch basins underneath of each car stall. And that is connected to an underground pipe that runs under, um, underground. <laughs> under and, the ground. <laughs> and out the side of the garage. So we dug that, got that all level and make sure everything was in place just how we wanted it. Put that down and then we could start on the in-floor heat. And that consists of a vapor barrier underneath. It's a six mil thick vapor barrier. And then we've got two inch thick foam insulation uh, laid down all across the floor mm -hmm. and up the sides. And then we come back with the PEX and we use seven eighths inch uh, PEX tubing for the radiant floor. And those are, I think it was about 16 inches on center. We laid all that piping, which was a lot of piping. It was a lot. It was a lot. And I think it was on the last roll. I finally like figured out the best way to do it, yeah. which is to step on it and then roll it yeah. versus trying to do what I did the whole time. She's the tube wrangler. <laughs> they call me the tube wrangler. <laughs> You told me to go 12 feet. The media room you say goes to there? Yeah. Are we planning on heating it? No. Well, that, I mean, that won't affect anything. It's still going to get warm in the room because the whole slab essentially is getting heated, right? So it 
radiate this way anyway. It's like a tornado coming through here. We need a drill. Oh my god. You think it comes to here? Well, it'll it'll be as large as we want it to be. As large as we think we need. But it's gonna come out to here, no, correct? It come a little bit like on that seam right there. Mm -hmm. Holy yeah. hell, that's a lot of us. All right, so in the basement, we're actually going to have two separate zones. This one is just going to feed the two bedrooms and the bathroom. And that way, when nobody's staying down here, we're, we not, can, wasting heat. we're not wasting heat for one. And for two is that when you're sleeping, you technically want to be able to sleep. Turn it a, down. Yeah, turn it down. So you gotta, you're a couple degrees cooler. All right, let's just start with the, the one zone because that's just one run. Yeah. So go grab a Oh yeah, I'll go grab some of the tubes by my own self. Some tuby doos. So with all the pecs installed, now we could go ahead and come back and pour the concrete. So we got the concrete poured in the basement. We had to wait for the perfect window of uh, temperature. higher temperatures. Yeah. The temperature was the big deal. We were pouring in winter, so you definitely had to wait till it was not freezing for what, 48 hours? Yeah. And it took a couple weeks to get that window of uh, about two to three days of warmer temperatures. Yeah. And, uh, but well, we got and the other good thing too is we had the heaters and we were running the heaters in the room to keep everything kind of warmed up exactly. while it was poured and everything. So, so we had these really cool heaters from uh, Midwest, Midwest Best. Best Equipment and they're called the Val 6 and it's behind us. It's right there and yeah. I don't know what we would have done without this thing. It is... Um, it's like having the sun in front of you. <laughs> I swear. It's, I but don't think we could build a house in the winter without one. It definitely beats having those, the typical salamanders or whatever you want to call them, um, because those are super loud and then they come along with this odor that can give you a headache and stuff like that. But this thing is quiet, it's odorless, and it's just a thing of beauty. Alright, so that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll probably start to cover some of like the electrical and now that we've got all the structure built, we're ready to get into the nitty gritty. The design process yeah. of the interior. So there's a lot more things, a lot more thought that's got to go a into. A lot more decisions that need to be made, a lot more stress. I felt like the structure is easy. The decisions are scary. Working on designing the kitchen, where lights are gonna go, electrical, what lights are gonna go where, mm -hmm. uh, flooring and all that stuff. So there's definitely a lot more decisions to be made and you will be there following along with us every step of the way. And if you don't, follow us on Instagram because we might need your help. That's right. I don't know if this is like a hair. My hair? I'm hoping it's my I hair. I hope that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that one didn't appear. If that was a beer here, I, I would throw up. I got my mouth. Yeah, that was gross. <laughs> that was pretty gross. gross. But you had, how did you, you had my hair entangled in that rat's nest on your face. Might not have been your hair. Ooh, oh. ooh, baby, it was your Valentine's Day date. Yeah. <laughs>